All right, well, I think I'm gonna go ahead and welcome everybody. So uh, my name is Ann McClure. I'm a residential realtor with McInerney Associates in Northern Virginia, and I'm licensed and I work by referral in close in Northern Virginia and Montgomery County, Maryland, and then some of the um, adjoining areas. And we've got uh, licensed partners across the river in DC. And if you're seeing this, you have joined us and we're so happy to have you for Ask the Expert. Um, we do this every couple of weeks and it was born out of the pandemic because we used to do a live event called Ask the Expert where we would invite several experts into a room and we have, you know, refreshments and cocktails and our friends and clients and guests could wander around and visit with our experts like one we have here today, Liz Sternberg, um, who we're going to hear more from in a minute and Liz would have had a tag on that said that she does closets and cabinets and organizing and garage organizing and all kinds of things. And it was a great opportunity to expose some local businesses and for people to get their questions answered by some experts. Well, during the pandemic, we decided to take it online. And it's actually been really great because we're able to share someone's expertise, bring really good info to people watching and our clients and, and consumers and so on and expose a really good local business. So um, this can be found on Facebook, obviously, on um, Zoom, uh, sorry, we're on Zoom on YouTube later and on my website. We're also gonna make it available to our guest, uh, Liz, so she'll have it as well. So um, I would like to introduce our guest formally. So Liz, thank you for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here and get to talk about our what we do um, and more specifically our garage spaces, so. Well, we're excited too. And I have a very ugly garage and one day I hope to, to take you up on your talents. So um, here's the deal. This visitor of ours here or here, I'm not sure how it shows up, is Liz Sternberg. And Liz is a designer and account manager uh, with tailored living, tailored living featuring Premier Garage. And Liz is originally originally a native of Iowa who moved here a little while ago, but she's been with Tailored Living for several years and was lucky enough to find a franchise here that needed her talents. And so um, Liz is just naturally a great organizer and she's really, really good at helping people design spaces and improve existing spaces for organization. So um, Liz, we know that the um, the franchise you're with has been in business for 15 years this July, right? Yes, yep. Um, July will be our 15th anniversary, so we're extremely excited to celebrate that here soon. Well, congratulations on that. And we're going to discuss today how to organize your garage and make room for your stuff and your car. Because <laughs> sometimes people do one <laughs> or the other, right? Right, right. Yeah. So, um, good. Well, we're, we're really happy to have you. I like to give a quick market update because I am in the business of real estate and that's how I've been fortunate to meet experts like you. So if, um, we'll just depart for just a, a couple minutes here, maybe not even that long to talk about the market. The market seems to be on everybody's minds lately um, and largely because of what we're hearing in the news. Um, there has been a very significant increase in interest rates. Um, mortgage interest rates have gone up about a percent in the last week. Um, and that's following some steady increases. So it's had a pretty chilling effect on the market. Um, and even though rates have moderated a little since, um, some damage was definitely done. So if you look at our um, some of the areas, we described the DC metro region as one big region with sort of six subregions in it. And it, looking at some of those, for instance, Montgomery County contract activity was down 27.5% as a result. Northern Virginia, which is defined as Arlington, Fairfax, City of Fairfax, Alexandria, and uh, Falls Church was down 27% also. Um, Loudoun County, 26.3, Prince William, 19, Washington, D.C., 15, and Prince George's, almost 11. So everybody's contract activity is down. You, you're hearing it in the news. It's pretty much to be expected. Now, putting this in perspective, um, we still have very low inventory. There are still people who need to buy homes and there still aren't enough homes on the market for the buyers out there. It's just cooled some. So, you know, it was 105 degrees out, you know, maybe we're at 76. It's still warm. It's just not nearly as hot. Um, so I think we're entering a more normal market. Um, that's what the experts are also telling us. 
And we'll just see where this takes us. But what I want to say is that there is opportunity out there. Sellers, homes are still selling. Buyers, there may be opportunity to not get in a bidding war. So there's some good news that comes along with this. So that's the market update. If you have questions about your own market or a market you're interested in, certainly let us know. We have friends all over the country. And um, we have experts in the regions around the D.C. metro area, and we're happy to help. So without delaying further, Liz, why don't we launch right into our, our questions today? Awesome. Sounds good. All right. So when I sell a house that has a garage, I always look at the size of the garage. We have one under contract right now in a neighborhood of two-car garage homes, but nobody parks two cars because it's not big enough. My particular listing is an oversized one car, which actually works out really well because they can get a car in and they have extra space and they don't feel like, you know, they were sort of sold a bill of goods of two that they can't fit, right? Um, and as a result, I look at it like, all right, you're not really fitting two cars in here and it's all this space. And it's often underutilized. Some people buy garage homes with no intention of ever putting the car in there. So, you know, it, it, it's it, like anything, we all have our wants and needs and how we use space, mm -hmm. but um, what are some of the basic things that you would ask someone to consider when they're looking at a garage organizing system? Right. Um, I, I think you hit on some really important points there. Are we parking one car in this space? Is our goal to park two cars in this space? Are we planning for the future? Are we going to increase the size of our car? Are we staying at the size that we're looking for? Because all of these things play a factor into how we're actually going to be able to use our space. Um, right. You don't want to open up a door right into a cabinet. I mean, you can't get out of your car. So yeah. definitely good questions to ask. Um, and then really, what are our hobbies? I do a full inventory of what's in your garage and even ask the question, what's not in your garage that you want in your garage, just to make sure that we have all the things um, in the space. Well, I mean, this, this graphic's really good because it speaks to the cars, but also, you know, all, singles buy homes, couples buy mm -hmm. homes, families buy homes, whatever. But a lot of times there are many people in a household with a garage with all different needs, like strollers, bicycles, sports equipment. So I'm glad to see that graphic of the family because I think the needs evolve too, which right. means you might want some flexibility um, and so on. And, and then, you know, you and I will go into more detail, but we've talked about, you know, in some areas, there are these super tall garages and then you might have a pull down ladder you have to consider or, uh, you know, how often, how often do you need to utilize certain things, right? Right, right. So just that accessibility of, are we using our holiday decor once a year or regularly? Mm -hmm. Do we need access to a ladder? Um, and how do you want to pull out your car in order to get that? Um, or is that in a place that we can just easily access it so you can get to the things that you want to get to without having right. to shuffle all the things around? Yeah. Um, are we needing access to pool chemicals or chemicals in general or paint, um, potting soil? I mean, these are all things to consider of what are your hobbies and how can I best organize this space to make it make sense for you and your family? Yep. I think, I, you know, I think people launch into these decisions and often asking these questions is really, really smart. A little, a little space planning. Mm -hmm. Um, would you share with us some of the latest uh, garage organizing design trends? Yeah, so I would say it's really dependent from needs to need basis. But if you're a family with a lot of activities going on, you have sports, bags, dirty shoes, places that you just need a home for that's designated to your family, Locker systems are extremely um, in right now and not your standard locker system that's, you know, beautiful and so many details, but a more functional, modular locker system. That's, mm -hmm. I mean, for the dirtier things. 
right. that you're using on a regular basis. Yeah. I would say um, workbenches as well, whether you're a handy person or just want a place to drop off your groceries as you're entering your um home it's kind of nice to set some stuff down and just have that drop zone so you're not superheroing all of your things in all at once um, <laughs> I like that verb <laughs> a lot of us Washingtonians do that don't we yes I'm I do it too often <laughs> That's um, right. but yeah I, I think those are kind of the big things right now um for sure yeah because I guess it can almost serve like su- you know, newer homes, they design with mud rooms, but if you're mm-hmm. altering an existing home, it can be a great way to use the space, right? Right, right. You know, you, you pull in, you got, you know, kids who have been at lacrosse or a dirty dog from hiking or whatever it is. So, um, so what kinds of um, <clears throat> materials are you commonly using? And I, you know, I was thinking of this question and my mind went a few different directions, not just like, you know, are the earth friendly choices, but also like, well, I've seen garages with bins and wire baskets and um, all kinds of hooks of all shapes mm-hmm. and holding all kinds of, you know, I've just seen so many different kinds of materials. So um, if you could enlighten us on what's available in terms of materials, that would be great. Yeah, we have so many different options for storage solutions, whether you're looking for a cabinet with doors to just hide everything to some open shelving, overhead racks, whether that's fixed or motorized. We also have slat wall, which comes with um, a lot of different accessories. We have 40 to 50 different accessories that you can put onto that in order to meet those needs that you're looking for. That's also really great for those side walls that you're pulling in your car. And again, you don't want to open into something super bulky. They're a lot slimmer, and so you can hang up some tools, your hoses, your rakes, your shovels, things that don't take up room, but you need a home for. So those are extremely helpful in that sense. Material-wise, all of our um, cabinetry is made out of melamine, which is a laminated pressed wood, so or an engineered wood. It's one inch thick, so it's very dur- durable and extremely sturdy. Your whole cabinet box is made out of that one inch thick material mm-hmm. and mounted directly to the wall. So again, really nice and sturdy. You can put a lot in there. Um, yeah. Our overhead racks are made out of steel, so a very durable um, material. And then also the slat wall is like a PVC type of material. I, you know, I... I love the idea of um, the overhead, um, Mm -hmm. which actually we're seeing here right now. And one of the reasons that I like this so much is because I don't know, I I don't know how to explain it, but a lot of these neo-traditional homes that are three levels in our area, for whatever reason, you go into the garage and it's anywhere from like three to five steps down from the main living area. So now you've got the full height of the garage you know, without having to leave room for duct work and those extra three or four or five steps, six, I mean, however many. So you have this super high space now for a car and we're such a vertical town, you know, in Washington. And, you know, I know there are areas where where homes are a lot more lateral like Texas and Florida, but, <laughs> but here they're very vertical. And using that space is just incredible, right? Right, right. There's so much real estate up there. So we do have some great options for that. Um, Our overhead racks, whether that's motorized or fixed, they come in a variety of different sizes. Mm -hmm. Our fixed comes in a size up to four feet by eight feet and could hold 800 pounds. So really good bang for your buck. Um, The motorized, so if you don't want to use a ladder to go and get your things and carry all of that down, the convenience of a motorized overhead rack um, is extremely helpful with the push of a button or even an app on your phone. You can raise and lower that system. Awesome. It's three feet by six feet and can hold 600 pounds. So still a lot of weight, yeah. um, but just a little bit smaller. Um, and then so you're, in, is that the is that the photo in the upper left that we see? Yes. Yep. That upper okay. left with the uh, mesh netting 
Okay. Is and that the 800 pound is the one below it. Correct. Yep. Fixed. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I was looking at the right thing. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yep. They both come in two different colors. So either a slate or a white. Um, so both options there, depending on what kind of color schemes you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, the other motorized units that you're seeing, so great for um, different universal lifts. So you see an overhead rack or a kayak, um, a platform there for just some bigger things that you want to get up off the ground. Um, we also have bike racks, so you can store three bikes in the air if you are a, a bicyclist. <laughs> Very cool. Um, but great options to be able to maximize your space because um, we see a lot of very tall garages for sure. Well, it's nice too because I see the slat system and like you can see it pretty prominently in the middle photo because I know in my own garage, like let's say I need a shovel. It might be behind three rakes, and you know an axe and some signs and like getting it out is just so annoying and then you can scratch something else and things fall over so I love the idea of utilizing the space along the walls and utilizing the space above you um so sometimes I have clients with special uh hobbies or I show a house that has I can tell that they have some special needs like um let's say that they're into fishing and they have a lot of rods and tackle or they're into gardening and they have like, um, have you seen those those um, gardening augers? They're like, they look like a giant screw. Some of oh, them yeah. eight to 10 <laughs> inches across. And how do you stack those? Like they fall over, they're heavy, they're hard. They're, they're not sharp like a sharp knife, but they're, they're sharp. Like right. if you dropped one, it could do some damage. So, right. you know, like when they, when they're specific, items like that do you have solutions yes absolutely so um like i mentioned before we have 40 to 50 different hooks that we can choose from um, and we'll walk through together do you need a fishing rod pole we have those specifically for those rods um i have two different options so if you want to see one vertical or horizontal you know depending on your space um we we have those options our hooks, some of them can hold up to 200 pounds. So you have that big auger that needs a home and you don't want to set it on a shelf because it's going to dig yeah, into that lot. shelf. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, maybe just using one of our um, wider hooks is going to hold that on there. Great mm -hmm. for tools. So a drill, batteries, those those things that are just a little bit bigger that need need a home. Yeah, we definitely have things for that. Great. I love the flexibility. And I know a lot of people will keep their, you know, let's say they're in a homeowners association. They can't keep their trash and recycling anywhere visible from the street. I do know people who will sometimes keep it in the garage. Um, do you have systems for that as well? And, and what would those maybe look like? Right. So um, our slat wall does offer like a recycling bin center. So you get, I believe, three smaller size um, bins if you like to separate those things. Um, I would say if you have a lot of recycling, a lot of trash, I would just recommend getting one of those, you know, your bigger bin. You put it in a space that's probably close to the door, out of the way of your car, so you can pull it in and out and still get your um, waste where it needs to go. But I also like to put some slat wall behind it. I mean, you will ding up the walls every time you pull that in and out. Um, it could be nice to put some out of season shovels or rakes and kind of rotate that because it's tucked behind there. Mm -hmm. um, but you're still using that wall space. That's really, I mean, we want to use every single inch that we can get. <laughs> well, I like what you said about the bins because... I think what might not occur to everybody is like, even if you're just rolling the bin in and out and it doesn't need to be affixed to the slat wall or to have a special container or be in a cabinet. Um, what's nice is because you're a, a space planner of garages, um, there can be, um, there can be, you, you can know that the bin is gonna go in this area 
and that the organizi- organizational stuff starts here, for instance. Like, right. even though it's not part of the system, it, it's still planned in the space, which I, I think is key to sort of thinking how you're using things. Because you're right, you don't, you want to be able to get to it easily and you want to be able to right. get it in and out because you're using it every week. Yeah, and sometimes you don't think about that, whether you just bought your home or you're in a remodel and you don't have those bins yet or you don't know the sizes of them. We can yeah. plan for that and I can put that in your rendering and show you exactly where we're going to put them to, again, plan ahead and plan around all of those things. Okay, so I love that you have a rendering. So the rendering shows the customization that can be available and like different ways you could use, uh, like the slat wall. I think you call it sometimes your base, right? Yes, yeah. So our... Yeah, a couple things. So our rendering is we send you a 3D rendering, which you get to take a look at your actual space physically. We can even meet together and I can show you around nice. um, and even put different props, people, your size car in that rendering to be able to show you exactly what you have and how we can best work your space. Um, our slat wall is great because it's it is your base so it's modular in the sense that let's say you have all of these things now that need a home but our lives are transitioning we have different hobbies maybe we're no longer interested in this you need some more hooks in order to account for the new things that you purchased um, now you have access to removing those hooks moving them around adding some baskets some shelves it's modular in the sense that all you need is that slat wall and then it can evolve as you evolve. Well, I was thinking about somebody earlier who does like n- not organizational design like you, but actually working with somebody one-on-one and going through whatever it is, piles of paper, closets, and so on. And um, in their household, they have, I think, four kids, but they just got a puppy. Mm-hmm. So I could see how that could change what you want on the slat wall you know, you've got your kid zone, you've got your animal zone, you know, right. you have leashes and bags and so on. So um, I love that you have the base that you can accessorize and, and change things in and out. Um, I think that's great. And then people don't have to meet with you every time if they want to do that. Can they just order the accessories? Yes. Yep. So you can order the accessories through us with a dealer code. Uh Um, or you can just give me a call and say, Liz, I need X, Y, and Z, and I will have them shipped or drop them off depending on where you're at. I feel like I love it when my clients call me for recommendations because there are a lot of realtors who just publish a directory and that there's certainly great efficiency in that. But I actually love the conversation. I love Mm -hmm. hearing how they're changing something, what's going on in their lives, you know, making a recommendation. And often I can get some good information from them that can help them further, which I, you know, if I give them directory, it's at their fingertips, you know, whether it's electronic or print, but I don't have the same interaction. So I do love it when they call, you know, I don't know. Yes. You kind of get a little update on what's going on yeah. and how things yeah. are going. And yeah, yeah. we got a new puppy. We had <laughs> twins. We need a bigger stroller in the garage, whatever it is. Right. right. Um, so, um, so you know, we talked a lot about um, using your vertical space and, you know, everybody's on a budget, right? And I think people are worried with inflation about, you know, how far is their dollar going to go? Um, and you have uh, you have an option called a, a grid system. Is that right? Am I saying Yeah. That? We, and, yeah. yeah. Could you talk a little bit about using that, whether it's for high space or something else versus like the lock? I mean... I guess there are modulars and then they're like full on cabinets, right? Right, right. So our grid shelf are mounted, they're fixed. Um, they come in at two different sizes. So you can get one for that's two feet deep and four feet wide, or the other that's two feet deep and six feet wide. And we can also put them together to, to give you a really big runway for all of your totes, all the things that you need a home for. Um, They're great because they hold up to 250 pounds. So still an awesome amount of weight. Um, I like to kind of put them even above your garage door because that's almost typically about two feet tall and some 
prime real estate up there. Yes. And it's also tucked back. So when your garage door is open, you don't see it. But when it's closed, you have that accessibility to go and I get it. I love that idea. Um, they come in two different colors, white or black. Um, and a good, a good use of material. And if you're okay with having things open, just an open shelving, it's it's a, a great option. Yeah. And it keeps things a little bit more affordable, I would imagine. So, yes. I mean, yep. I, I, let me say, I love seeing a beautiful epoxy floor and like red lacquer cabinets, but <laughs> of course I would like a, the most expensive option. It's like, yes, it's beautiful. So now let me get realistic and go look at my budget and what I can really afford. Um, you know, Liz, when people are getting ready to do this, sometimes the garages are pretty rough and there's a lot of stuff in them. Um, I'm always telling people that when they buy a house and I see like drywall, like holes in the drywall um, where something just hasn't been sealed, like get some spray foam and seal it because you want to make sure your fire blocking is, is all intact. Um, God forbid there's ever some kind of catastrophic event and you don't want to have an, you know, an insurance emergency. So taking stock of your garage infrastructure at a time when you're thinking of doing organizing, I think is a really good step. Um, but that's me from the real estate perspective. So what would you suggest people or how would you suggest people plan for having you all come in and do this? Like what do they need to think about and need to do? Yeah. So, I mean, definitely a good good advice there um kind of prep work for us so we focus on the storage solution so we will mm -hmm. install your cabinetry um do the epoxy flooring but we do need someone to remove what you previously have paint any of your walls so if you're doing a complete garage makeover painting those walls are going to make a world of a difference i mean yes. you're cleaning it up um so someone to paint, someone to complete that drywall if it's not completed, um, an electrician if you want to move any outlets, if you're thinking about doing an electric car in the future, maybe oh, adding an idea. outlet, yeah. because again, we're planning for the future. So right. if that's something that you want, we might as well install that in instead of installing our stuff and then installing around it after the fact. So that's a really good point. Yeah, we also offer uh, MyBox. We have a partnership with MyBox. So um, what that means is they're going to drop off a pod at your home. You get that a week in advance from when we actually start our process. They leave it at your driveway. You load it up and then it sits there while we do our work. And then you have a week after we're completed to load those things back into your space. Um, extremely nice because your garage is full of things and where are you going to put it while we do our work? So again, it just sits right there and it's extremely convenient. And you also get the chance to edit your things as you're touching all of them in real time. You touch them two to three different times and you can say goodbye to some of the things that you don't want back into your beautiful space. What a nice way to say that, Liz. Edit your things. <laughs> I got a little thing editing I need to do. <laughs> That's awesome. No, we all keep too much stuff. I mean, I know we, we moved recently and I thought I did a good job of paring down. And my God, I cannot believe how much there still is. So, um, right. It's hard. Yeah. yeah. We talked um, earlier, but I like that, that you have a, a my box solution and I don't, are they a franchise? Do you know, like if people are watching in other parts of the country, I'm sure they can find like pack rats or storage cubes or whatever, but yeah, my box pods. Um, I don't know if my box is a franchise on the top of my head. I mean, it, yeah, but there's, there's definitely options. You haul so those also. kinds of crate storage <laughs> solutions that can yeah. leave it in your driveway or whatever. Mm -hmm. And remember guys, if any of you watching are in a homeowner's association, you'll want to get approval for that. So, right. Yes. Yep. And um, where to put that, where, where exactly. Place that for exactly. sure. Um, we talked, um, I know we're starting to run short on time, but we talked earlier about design trends and there is a flooring trend that you wanted to mention. And I think it's really good that you're bringing this up because like you said, planning for the future and you mentioned, you know, if you're going to be maybe one day in the future getting an electric car, have your electrician in now. 
well, if you're moving all this stuff out, now's a great time to make the floor look better. So could you talk about this flooring design trend? Yes, you're absolutely right. So, I mean, you don't want to try, you don't want to move all those things out two, three times. You want to do it once and done. So um, we do offer epoxy flooring. So that process is we diamond grind your floor that opens up the pores and the cements. From there, we do a base coat of epoxy. We flake directly into that. So we let that sit overnight. We come back the next day and we remove all the excess flake um, and then do a top coat of polyaspartic. Um, again, we let that sit overnight. You can walk on it within 24 hours. We ask that you don't drive on it for 72 hours. Um, but it's an extremely um, easy to clean, very durable. Um, it doesn't allow for anything that you spill to absorb into your concrete. So if you spill something, you just wipe it right up, clean it up. Um, super easy to manage and maintain. It's 100% UV protected, um, low VOC, and also when you're coming in from the outside, especially in the summer months, you tend to get those tire marks on your floor that polyaspartic yep. is going to help prevent that from happening. I, I always think it's money well spent because I realize it costs a little bit, but it makes the garage look so good and so right. clean and so tidy. And I'm sure it's easier to clean. So um, easy to clean. And, you know, you, you mentioned something, you know, people can go to Home Depot and they can buy this, you know, epoxy. However, I'm, I'm imagining, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that yours, because of the, what did you call it? Diamond? Um, yes. Yeah. So we diamond grind our floors. So that's yeah. the prep is the most important part. Um, others, acid edge, it's, it's the diamond grinding that's really going to open up that, the pores to allow the epoxy to properly adhere. Um, our system is also 40 mils in thickness versus others are less than that, 15 oh, wow. to even 10 mils. So um, definitely a good durable um, system. We mm -hmm. offer a 10-year warranty. So if something were to happen, peeling, um, chipping, you let us know and we'll take care of it. That's nice. Yeah. So I imagine it's more durable and, you know, holds up better over time. Um, and, you know, these, doing the flooring, doing the shelving and the, the um, you know, we see some before and after pictures and it sure looks really <laughs> good. And doing the, you know, organizational um, items, you know, sometimes people will say to me, well, Ann, what's my return on investment? And, you know, typically, even if you do a kitchen, According to the National Association of Realtors, it's only about 75 cents to 80 cents on the dollar, mm -hmm. you know, depending on the year. You don't get every penny back. But here's what happens. When you, first of all, you should do it because you enjoy it. You'll love the organization. You'll love how clean it looks. You'll love how it's easy to take care of. Um, pride in your home, right? But also when you go to sell, let's say there are three or four homes on the market in your neighborhood and, you know, one or two others are your model, but you have a lot of these upgrades and you have storage solutions and organizational, you know, flexibility. I mean, you could show how people can use the space and it's got these beautiful floors and overhead storage and everything. You know, it's likely that your home will be the, be the one that people are interested in. You know, it, it's not just in the dollars, it's in the appeal and how you use a space and if people can envision living there. So, you know, I'm, I'm all for this. I think whatever makes your life easier more organized, you can be more efficient with your time. I think it's worth it. We all are short on time. I realize there's a little bit of a cost to it, but I think this is the kind of project you do. You're gonna be there a few years and you mm -hmm. live with it and you love it and you enjoy it. And, you know, like you said, it can change as your family changes. Liz, before we go, I wanted to mention one more thing. Um, you do a lot of other stuff than just so many spaces. And so <laughs> I love seeing this graphic because here are some of the things you do. Um, closets, mud rooms. I love the mud room. Um, okay, I particularly love this laundry room photo because I love the dog space and the dog shower to the left. Um, and then, you know, pantries, closets, home offices, Murphy beds. So th this you have a great offering and I love seeing this. Did you wanna add anything to, to what you all do? 
Yeah, I mean, we're your whole home storage solution experts. So wherever you have that space that needs to get organized, you need a system in place, we are able to um, help with that. Our mission is to turn chaos into calm through creating custom storage solutions specifically for the way you live. So wherever that space is, if that's your home office, if that's your primary bedroom, if that's your pantry, we're here to assist with that. Um, and our Murphy beds come in twin to king size beds, which is very functional for yeah. you know, that home office that you then want to turn into a, a guest bedroom. Um, so a lot, lot of great options. Well, I've said it in many different um, Ask the Experts that we've done, but people are using their spaces differently than they ever have before. And those Murphy beds and, you know, great storage solutions are more critical than ever, I think. So I love seeing that you offer all this. And, you know, for those of you watching, even if, you know, you want to do DIY, you've gotten some great ideas here. You can see things you could do. But if you want to call Liz and consult with her, she's very conversant. She's very friendly. Um, she'd be happy to talk with you about what she can design for you. And like she said, she'll do renderings. And I think, you know, you can you can increase the efficiency of how you live. Um, and I mean, let's face it, I, I don't know a lot. I go bananas when I can't find something I really need. And I love having the organizational systems because I'm not naturally that way. So this is Liz's contact information if you want to reach out to her. Uh, Liz, we are so happy you joined us today. Thank you for all the great information. Thanks so much for having me. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> it is. I know. It's These these are kind of fun, aren't they? That sounds, that sounds self-serving, but they actually are. And I'll tell you what, I have learned a ton. I mean, I, I've i learned so much and I really appreciate it. And you know what? It gives me fodder. I know realtors from other parts of the country watch this sometimes because it, it helps us go, okay, look at this space. You're having a storage problem. Let's think of how we can use this house. So Anyway, thank you for joining us. For those of you watching, please share this with your family and friends. Don't keep us a secret. Um, again, it'll be available on my website, on YouTube, and on Facebook. And Liz will have it as well. Um, and if you need help with uh, real estate, anything related to that, I'm also happy to help. So uh, we hope you'll, you've enjoyed today and that you'll join us again in a couple of weeks for another Ask the Expert. Thanks so much. Thanks again, Liz. And thanks, Jennifer, for all the work behind the scenes. Yes, thank you.